this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about GW's new contrast paint, what it is, how it works, and how you can achieve similar results with a couple simple techniques with the paint you have. There's two different undercoats you can use to achieve this technique. The first is just a plain white. We've just used Steinol Res White Primer. And the second is Xenthal Highlighting. So with this, we've primed the miniature black and then sprayed a white primer down from above. If you're not sure how to do Xenithal highlighting, uh, I have a video on my channel that explains it. Take a look at that. There's four main ingredients to make a similar paint to GW's contrast paint. The first, of course, is a paint. The thicker the pigment, usually the better for this technique. Scale 75 has real thick pigments. We're gonna use their Mediterranean Blue as an example. We're also gonna use Quick Shade Wash Mixing Medium from the Army Painter. What's important about this is the medium makes the paint a little bit thicker and allows the pigment to flow better than just thinning with water. And finally, Airbrush Flow Improver. Same, same idea here. This is gonna allow the paint to dry a little bit slower as well as thinning it without breaking the pigment apart. And then finally, we're just gonna use some plain water as well. I'm gonna mix up two versions of this. I'm gonna mix up one the way I usually do, which, which is gonna use mostly water. And I'm gonna mix up another, which is more like the GW Contrast paint, which uses the mixing medium and the airbrush flow improver as well. So on the Zenithal highlighted model, we're gonna do my version of this technique. Um, and essentially that's gonna be mostly just watered down scale 75 um, on top of the Zenithal highlight. We'll see how that turns out. Then the second, we're gonna use a uh, a mix similar to the GW Contrast paints, we're going to put that over white, similar to what they're doing. Before I start, I want to talk just a little bit about the purpose of this paint. So their new paint is aimed at beginners. It's aimed at people who want to be able to get a couple colors on their model and get it on the table, ready to play. The idea behind the contrast paint is to be able to paint one coat of paint on the model and then still have some good contrast, which makes the model look better on the table. Buy some contrast paints, prime your models, one coat of paint on the models, put them on the table and play. So this, these paints are not aimed at someone who's already a very experienced painter, not someone who's painting to make the models look um, display quality. This is aimed at getting models on the table so you can play the game. So this technique that I've created using Zenithal highlighting is similar. Uh, it's low time required. An extra bit of highlighting with an airbrush is required. Uh, compared to the version without the Zenithal highlighting. But otherwise, you're going to achieve a very similar effect with just one coat of paint. So let's go ahead and take a look at making your own contrast paint similar to Games Workshops, and we'll put that on the model that's primed white. So the first thing we're going to add is we're going to add a little bit of Quick Shade Wash Mixing Medium. So I'm just going to do about two drops, because we're just doing one model. So we want to do two drops, and it's hard to see the drops there because it's getting a little bit bubbly, but there's two drops in there. And then we're going to do one drop of the Flow Improver. And then we're going to do one drop of paint. Again, the Scale 75 is very thick and very heavily pigmented paint, so we just want one drop to give it the color we're looking for. There's our one drop of paint. And then we're gonna do one drop of water as well, because again, this is just a little bit thicker pigment. So you're gonna have to play with these. So it's almost four equal parts, except for the quick shade washing mixing medium, which you're adding double the other. So one drop of everything, two drops of, two parts of quick shade uh, mixing medium. And then we're gonna just stir that up with our brush. And as I mentioned, this paint is very thick. So we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna double that recipe. So we're gonna add more quick shade mixing medium. Two more drops. And then we're gonna add one more drop of flow improver. And go ahead and mix that up. And we're probably gonna add one more drop of water as well. So this is, this is the part that's really the most challenging thing that, that a beginner is gonna have trouble with when they're trying to make their own paint is getting it to the right consistency. 
So there's there's not a perfect a perfect ratio here. Obviously, depending on how thick your paint is that you're using. So we're gonna add one more drop of water there as well. Oops, it's a little bit extra. So depending on how thick your paint is, or depending on your how thick your pigment is in the paint, uh, you're gonna have to change this recipe up a little bit. But what we're looking for is really runny, almost completely watery, but not. Uh, to the point where it breaks the pigment apart. That's why we're trying to use more so of the mixing medium and the flow improver So now you can see it's pretty thin when we paint it on my, my fingernail here and we spread it You can see that I can actually you can see through the the pigment there. So that's what we're looking for So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna paint the skin on this guy and you want to th slop it on pretty thick go see that see how it's it's like a, like a, similar to a wash it's running into the crevices so we're just gonna slap that on real thick all around the model and again our final mix here for the scale 75 was now I'm being really extra sloppy about this obviously if you were doing detail painting on this character as well um, you would be more careful about where you're putting this um, but however, I'm just using this as example, so we're just gonna cover the model uh, with it. And again, you wanna put it on pretty thick and then let it run into the crevices. So again, the ratio we used here was one drop of paint to four drops of mixing medium to two drops of flow improver and two drops of water. So there you can see we got a pretty similar result. It might be a little bit too thin so we might back off on the water next time, maybe one drop of water. So we'll go ahead and let that dry and then we're gonna compare the results. So now for my version of getting models on the table quickly, uh, it does require one extra step on the priming and that means that means to prime black and then do the zenithal highlighting. So that's what I've done here. Now I'm gonna use one drop of the Mediterranean Blue Scale 75 paint and then we're going to use all water to thin this down. So we're gonna go two drops of water to start with here and see where we're at. So this will break up the pigment a little bit more, but we wanna do, we, in this version, I wanna break up the pigment a little bit more because I, I basically just want very thin paint, almost a glaze. Um, and we're pretty close. I'm actually gonna thin it down a little bit more. And you have to work with these. Anytime you're doing this, the the paint's gonna dry while you're working with it. A wet palette is definitely uh, recommended for this technique, and it's normally what I use, but I just wanted to come to uh, show you in a clean uh, cap what the paint looks like after I've mixed it. So next, we're gonna put a real thin layer of this paint all over the model. And now the zenithal highlight, the idea here is we want a very thinned out layer of paint because we want that pre-highlight that's done in white and black to show through this paint. So again, I'm gonna paint the whole entire model like I did with the, the, the last one, and we'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So we'll go ahead and slap this paint down here. And to give you an idea of how the Zenithal highlight shows through this base layer essentially, and gives you uh, depth. And then it'll be up, it's up to you, um, obviously, Everybody's gonna have their own techniques that they like, that they enjoy, that they get better at. Um, but this gives you another option to get models on the table quickly. So, uh, and this is the version that I've done on my stream in the past uh, and will probably continue to do on my stream um, just because it works really well for me to get a model quickly painted uh, with some good shading and highlighting and such. Now I'm gonna try not to put too much paint on and we'll go ahead and just show you how thin the paint is with, by painting the shield here real quick. No, I didn't on the last guy, but there we go. So we'll go ahead and let that dry and then I will show you the difference between the two after they're dry. All right, the two models are mostly dry now. So here's the difference between the two techniques and paint styles. So the contrast paint, I probably thinned out just a little bit too much. So as you can see, uh, there's the contrast is greater in the model with the white undercoat and the uh, similar mix to Games Workshop contrast paint. 
Um, and then there's a little bit, I got a little bit too thick down here. You have to avoid that. I kind of was a little sloppy with my application of it. And again, it was thinned out just a little bit too much, but it's pretty close. You always want to test it on the model and then adjust your mix and then do it again. So this is a way that you can make your own contrast paint with, if you have these materials at home, you can make your own contrast paint. Otherwise, I mean, it's not, a, I'm not saying the product is bad. Go buy it, especially if you want to get models on the table fast. It seems like a great product to use, uh, although it's not out yet. Um, from everything I've seen about it and from the people that have used it so far, it looks like it's going to be a, a really good way for people to get models on the table. What do you think about the GW Contrast Paint? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think it's going to be a great thing because it's going to help people get models on the table and look better on the table faster. Less gray on the table is better. So then this is my technique that I've developed um, in the past. Um, this is with a zenithal highlight undercoat and then just water to thin the paint. Um, this gives it a little bit more of a uniform coat, less contrast. But the idea here is to get a base coat, tabletop ready to get on the table, that you can come back to and do glazing, highlighting, even pin washing or washing to bump that contrast up even more. So you can see here, it's still drying in a few places, but you can see here that the top surfaces where the undercoat was white is nice and bright, and the surfaces where the undercoat was black is nice and dark on the bottom of this, this peck here on the chest. So you can see how that makes uh, a big difference there, um, and then gives the whole model some nice undercoated contrast. So that's the method I like to use um, for underpainting, and then of course light coat over the top to get models on the tabletop fast. And then here's the one that I mixed up with a paint similar to Games Workshop's contrast paint. Now again, much more contrast straight out of the bottle, um, or out of the bottle cap in this case. Um, either way, um, this model, you wouldn't have to do really much shading or highlighting on this model. Although again, I think my mix was a bit thin to give it a little bit more uniform coat, you'd be a little bit less thin, but you've achieved a pretty similar result and it looks pretty good. I mean, you really wouldn't have to go back over that skin at all. That's, that's pretty much got a shading and a highlighting all built, built right in. So uh, that looks pretty good. It's going to depend on what you want to achieve with your models, how you want them to look on the table. But either way, uh, it's great that there's options out there like this to do at home as well as options you can buy straight from Games Workshop to use. So hopefully uh, you picked something up out of this video. And again, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. For live interactive tutorials, follow Pitts Pilot and subscribe on Twitch. For weekly content including tutorials, tips, and gaming videos, click subscribe here on YouTube. And if you want to see more examples of my work, you can always follow me on social media. Thanks for watching.